Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 63 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is authenticity. Our quote of the day comes to us from Janet Louise Stevenson. Authenticity requires vulnerability, transparency, and integrity. It is my pleasure to bring you today's episode. I only recently connected with our guest via another podcast, but he definitely gets it. His business is all about helping others succeed, and he does it for all the right reasons. His positive and upbeat spirit is something that we can all learn from. It is my honor to introduce Benjamin Tyler. Benjamin, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living Podcast. Hey, man. I'm just great to be here, Christopher. It's, uh, it's an honor always to share my message, share what I'm doing, and inspire people to you know go after the dreams. So thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate you being here. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen today? I'm ready, man. I'm ready to make it happen every day, but you know I'm super excited right now, so let's do it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so the number one objective of our show is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves or their dreams. And I was curious if you had either a story about perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and didn't quit. Yeah, life has life has always been a, a constant, a constant always when you start pursuing it. You always have those moments, and for me, I whether it was smart or not, I burned the ships. I put in my two-week uh, resignation. I packed my bags from New York City, packed the U-Haul, and came back to small town Wisconsin to start Klein Enrollment Academy. And the first six months were tough, um, real tough. In fact, to a point, I was living like most businesses. We started in our parents' basements, and. One day, my parents called me up when I was, you know, hammering away at the keyboard in the basement, called me up and said, you know, Ben, this isn't working. Uh, We want you to leave the house. You need to move out. And their initiative uh, was to get me to get a job, you know, a J-O-B. And I remember just looking at them saying, okay, like I completely respect their decision. I still respect it today. And I said, I'll move out and give me a month and I'll be out of the house. And they said, what are you going to do? And I said, what do you mean? I'm going to keep going. And they get big doe eyed and they look at me and they're like, what are you talking about? This is crazy. This isn't working. I'm like, I know, I know it's not working, but I feel it is almost there and I can't stop. And I just, I moved into that place and I really had to start focusing when I had to pay the rent and then eat them, you know, and the food. I really focused on generating money and I was able to a few months later create start creating six figure earnings. Not six figures. I didn't have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank account, but I was making over eight thousand dollars because I just started really focusing on actually bringing money in because my back was against the wall and I, I just never quit. That's my no quit moment, I guess, is when you want something bad and you know it um, and you're willing to put yourself in the back against the wall to make it happen. I mean, that's, you know, that's part of my story, really. That's a great story, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. I wanted to ask, during those tough times, was there anything perhaps that you either read or were listening to that helped push you along the way? So... I actually stopped reading and taking in a lot of knowledge because I thought knowledge was holding me back. But what I had, which was so, is so much more important than a book, is I had a coach. And I had a coach that had been in a situation that I was at, and he still is my coach today and mentor. And I went to him. And, you know, a book is great, but that guy has 15 years of online marketing experience and business experience. And he helped guide me there. He helped me really transform my business business and bring money in. And I I know I highly recommend everybody. Knowledge is great. Always soaking up is great, but you should also have a coach. 
I'm glad you said that because that's one of the things that we do at No Quit Living is we do training, coaching, and speaking. And one of the things we talk about quite often is the word mentor. And obviously, you referenced a coach and a mentor. So one thing I would ask is for our listeners that are looking or interested in finding a mentor or a coach as you did in your specific field, what did you do? Did you just do something as simple as a Google search or did you reach out to somebody that you knew in your space? Yeah, so just... (laughs) I didn't Google search it. I mean, coaching is really about building a relationship and finding someone you connect with. And for me, it was, I spent a lot of time on Facebook and there's one guy I'm proud to even say his name, Scott Oldford. Uh, I started seeing his message and relating to his stories and he was doing all the right things with marketing to me and I resonated with him and I felt like I could be vulnerable with him because if you're going to get a mentor, like, having action steps are great, but being vulnerable about where you're at and, you know, being real with somebody and feeling comfortable giving that kind of information away was what really got me to transform my life. And it's, it's finding that person. It's not so much the Google search and, and figuring out what results they provide as it is finding someone that you're willing to, to let down the walls and be completely honest with so that they can actually help you. Because if you're not honest, with the person who's trying to help you out you're, and you're not honest with yourself, you can't really get where you want to go. You know, I'm so glad you said that. I just started working with a new client this morning and he mm-hmm. a- he actually spoke to two different coaches and I actually always recommend not to go out and spend an enormous amount of time, but you should always make sure that you speak to one or two people because as you mentioned, it's so important that you do have that connection and I'm glad you shared that because it's important to take an extra day or two or three or four interviewing a couple people and it's not just for a coach per se it's for other things in life so I'm glad that you mentioned that because one of the things we talk about is is the connection and actual real relationships and I think that's the one takeaway sometimes is with technology these days it's difficult to always connect those people a hundred percent it you just nailed it man I can't really add much to that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that leads me to my next question is one of the things we utilize in each of our show is a daily quote and I was curious if you have a favorite quote yeah, a uh, favorite quote that I have is by a man who recently passed away, the great uh, Wayne Dyer, and he said, you don't get what you want in life, you get who you are. And for my life, for so long, I wanted the world to show up for me. And that involved a world where I was abusing drugs and alcohol, and I didn't realize that it, I was affecting my life. It was always somebody else's fault. And when I I saw that quote, it really just opened my eyes. And it's true because the world can change for you. And how the world shows up for you can change, but you need to first show up for it. You know, there's no free handouts in this in this world. There's, you know, it's it's how you show up, and that quote has always stuck with me. I I keep telling it to myself as I try to, you know, quote unquote, level up in my life because what we want in life is not about the world giving it to us, but us uh, changing who we are so that we can actually receive it. No, that is a that is a great quote. And Wayne Dyer was an, was an awesome gentleman. I've read many of his books, and I think uh, that is a really unique quote. So here's a different question for you: If you had to define yourself in one word, what would that word be? Ooh, um, authentic would have to be the word. I I I don't like to wear masks. I like to wear who I am, you know, every single day. And you meet Benjamin Tyler and you don't have to worry about believing who he is as a person. Well, that's a, that's awesome. And I think that's a great word. And that's the first time that that word has been referenced in our podcast by any of our guests. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So here's something different, different question for you. If you could improve or change one thing about yourself right this minute with the snap of your finger, what would that be? I wish I was more organized. <laughs> I wish I was somebody that one of the big things that has held me back in my business and my growth is not organizing everything and keeping things um, in order. And it's not just so much like filing your paperwork, but looking at the numbers in my life and, you know, tracking what's going on because, you, you know, you, you can't manage what you don't track. Right. And you don't, you can't track anything if you're not organized with how you're, how you are tracking life in many different ways. And I wish 
and I, you know, I, I'm kicking myself because I'm spending about a day each each week now trying to get all of my organization together. And it's just like, man, if I would have just done this <laughs> from the start, my life would be so much easier right now. No, I, I think that's awesome. And maybe you should look into a organization coach. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. I probably should. I don't know if they're out there, but I'm sure they are. So they any, are. So any, they li- are. any listeners that are organizational <laughs> coaches, just reach out to, uh, to Benjamin Tyler and uh, maybe he'll hire you. You probably have my money pretty quickly. <laughs> so if you could go back and give the 20-year-old version of yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? Oh, man. I mean, the 20-year-old version of me was um, fueled with drugs and alcohol in my system most of the time and running away from my problems. Uh, I think it, for me, I would tell that 20-year-old to talk to somebody and to share what's going on, share what's wrong, share how you feel, and um, let it out because we leave so much in us. We leave so much of our doubts. We leave so much of our past. We feel we leave so much of our 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 fears, our broken hearts inside of ourselves, and we keep it trapped. And then it it just becomes a cancer. It fills us with doubt. It fills us with not feeling lovable. It fe- makes us not feel worthy of what we want in life. But if you just start letting it out, sharing it speaking it in real words so you can hear it so other people can hear it and not keep trying to run away from it and hide it that life it just becomes easier and it's easier to move through those things so just stop benjamin stop keeping it so locked inside and start talking to somebody no that's that's great advice and i think people from all walks of life could definitely maximize different areas of their lives by talking to other people in different different ways too, not just via coach or mentor, but just maybe friends or family. So I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Yeah. I mean, just to add a little bit to it, you know, I think it goes a little bit beyond friends and family because sometimes we don't feel we can reveal that stuff, but just a third party, you know, there's, you know, maybe it's a, it's somebody that you, you kind of know and you feel you can trust and you have a cup of coffee with him. You know, it doesn't have to be your inner circle of friends where you're worried about them telling your other friends because friends can get gossipy. And maybe it's not your your partner or your wife or your husband because they have different, you know, they have different motives why they love you. I mean, they have a motive for their life. So finding someone that has no, you know, motive is sometimes the best thing as well. And I just kind of want to add to that. Yeah, no, I think that is important. And I think in today's day and age, you, you do have to be cognizant of who you tell certain things to. But I think it is important. And I think everybody grabs a cup of coffee or something to eat. So I think that's a uh, that's a great, very low-key way to do it also. Mm-hmm, definitely. So as we're always looking to improve different things for our listeners and provide and add value, I was curious if you have either a morning ritual or something specific you do every day that you think has helped lead to your success. Yeah, you know, I part of the organization. I'm not a man of a lot of routines. Uh, my big habit really is I don't, you know, I don't take I don't take a day off. And a lot of people cringe when I say that, and they they talk about work life balance and all of these things. But for me, every day you need to show up towards the goals you want. And it doesn't mean you have to work a 15 hour day. But there's no such thing as imbalance. When you want something, you need to be doing it every day and taking doing that one percent more to taking action. And I mean that for me is my daily routine. Is I'm not. I'm not a hustler or a grinder, but I show up every day for what I want and I work towards it. And I think that's that's incredibly important if you truly want to be successful, whether it's working out and you want the body of your life, whether that's creating a business, whether that's becoming good at the piano. I don't know whatever you want to create, but you got to do it every day. I'm so glad you said it because that's the one of the things we talk about and we take pride in is accountability, both self-accountability and holding yourself to a higher standard. And one of the things we, we touch on is you need to take action. And one of our guests many episodes ago was talking about action, and, and he was very strong in the sense that he said you could take the best information, but if you take zero action, you're going to yield no results. So I'm glad you touched on that because it's so important. And, and when you touch on 
taking a step each and every single day and one percent that's how you do it it's not all at once in one day it's it's working on it every single day and eventually doing it every single day two three four five weeks later whether like you said it's working out or playing the piano or writing a book if you do it every single day a little bit you fast forward two three weeks you're going to be successful yeah, and it's. I always like the analogy. I think one of the hardest things as adults is we get our pride gets in the way if it's trying something new. It's that feeling of being uncomfortable. But look at a kid, and you know, kids grow so fast because every day they're trying things and they're not worried about getting beat up. They don't worry about falling down. They have scarred, scarred knees, and they're still out there, and you know, on the pitch playing with their buddies on the field. You know, like it's just we have to allow some of that child to come back into us. And I feel when you allow a little bit more of that, you live more authentically. You go after what you want because so often what's holding us back from like that 1% every day is these ex- expectations that we have to be great. And greatness doesn't come from natural talent. It comes from just going after things and doing it every day and repetition. No, I, I, I'm, I love you saying that as far as this story with the kids. And I was talking to a friend last week and he said, if you look at a toddler that's learning to walk, the toddler doesn't fall down once and give up and say, well, I can't walk. The toddler might fall down hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of times. But you know what? Every single time the toddler keeps getting up and going. Yeah. And, and when they're walking, I have a niece and nephew right now, and I know you have kids. When they when they are walking and learn how to walk, they're still tripping over their feet for a while too. No, that's very <laughs> that's very true. And some kids takes you know months and months, but the best part about it is they don't stop and they don't give up. Yep. So here's an interesting question for you. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Yeah. Uh, For me, the person that I would love to have dinner with is uh, Abraham Lincoln. You know, I'm a World War, or not World War II, a Civil War buff, but he just, uh, there's so many things that he he was that just, I think it, it just resonates so much. I mean, he, he was a prairie boy. He was out in the, you know, he, he came from what at that time we would call, you know, trailer trash. You know, he was just, he came from the prairie and he didn't go to college and he learned everything himself and he had a failed business under his belt and he just kept going and kept failing. But what he had was a a mission for significance. He wanted to leave his impact in the world and he was good with words and he kept practicing the words and being an orator, which allowed him, you know, to be one of the greatest presidents, in my mind, the greatest president ever. And I mean, the people he surrounded himself with, he never expected people to be perfect. And he just, he just expected people to try and to keep going after things. And he, there's just so much he signifies. And I would just love uh, to pick his brain about how he just looks at life. It would be great to have dinner and just ask him. You know, I think I shared this with you when we spoke last week, but out of all the guests, he has been the number one individual that was selected for dinner. And I think to your comment and about who he was and what he did, whether you supported his policies or his political background or not, is he just never gave up. And if we had to use somebody like Jerry West is the logo for the NBA logo. If, we, if, if I had a gun to my head now and somebody said you need to take an individual or a person and make that person your logo, I, he would definitely be uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, and I think one of the, one of the best things that stand by the, the character of Lincoln was when the w- war ended, everybody wanted justice. You know, Everybody wanted to murder, treason, wanted all these people to be punished. And Lincoln said, you know, let them up easy. Like, we're not going to sit here and punish people for what they did. We're going to move forward and allow these people to be part of that that process. No, I couldn't agree more. And it reminds me of the quote is, is hate brings more hate and love brings more love. And, and I think Lincoln was wise beyond his years as far as how they handled certain things during that era where he was president. Yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be on Twitter too much. <laughs> I don't think he would be on Twitter at at all. I think uh, he'd probably have an unbelievable YouTube channel with his speeches and things, but I don't think he would go anywhere near Twitter. <laughs> Me either. So I wanted to ask you if there's anything exciting that you're working on or about to release that you'd like to share with our listeners. Yeah, there's nothing really new. I mean, my business is Client Enrollment Academy where I show – the expert how to build a business online and get some high paying clients. 
I mean, there's nothing in the works that I'm launching or anything, but you know, I exist and things are always, I'm always creating free content to give for value and people can find that at clientenrollmentacademy.com. No, I like that. And, and before we let you go, I wanted to ask if you had any parting words for our listeners. Yeah. So I, my parting words is I spent, I spent nine years in a job I hated and I was always in that job because of expectations of other people, pleasing my father to make him proud, pleasing other people, doing what was quote unquote right. And it was killing me inside. It was killing this thing of my soul that was screaming for the greatness that's in me. And I believe everybody has that feeling of greatness. And it doesn't mean you have to have a million dollar business. It doesn't mean you have to stand on a stage and speak, but there's something in you that's calling to give to the world. And just to spend some time honoring that and finding ways that maybe you can start start giving what it is that you want in the world because us spiritually, I believe, have that in us. And uh, I would love really anyone that has that feeling inside of them that feels stuck or maybe has a business they want to take online. I'd love to just chat with you for 15 minutes and learn more about it create a strategy for you to move forward and build a relationship because y- you are one of those people I want in my life, no matter what stage of it you're in. And if you want to do that, go to clientenrollmentacademy.com slash no quit. And there's just a 60 second application. If the questions don't fit, just answer them loosely, schedule a call and um, let's, let's connect. I have to say, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. But I can't say that because of all this stuff. So I says, if it doesn't fit, then no quit. Um, <laughs> so I really, really appreciate that. In addition to your website, if our listeners want to follow or connect with you on uh, social media, are you um, active on social media in case they want to connect with you that way as well? Yeah, I mean, the best way to get connected with me, uh, my platform where I do most of my business and connection is Facebook. And I always say... Don't connect with me on my business page on Facebook. Find me on my personal page because um, I truly I want you in my life and I want to learn more about what you're up to too. No, I appreciate that. And I would definitely recommend to our listeners and other people who are out there is definitely connect with, with Benjamin via his offer. And that's actually how I connected with Benjamin myself is being a listener of Entrepreneur on Fire as well as a former guest. I connected with Benjamin. So listen, I cannot thank you enough not only for your time, but also the great stuff you share with us today. And I look forward to hopefully speaking with you soon. Oh, man, we'll stay connected, brother. Thank you. To sum up today's episode and our theme of the day, authenticity, that is exactly what Benjamin is. He throws no punches, and he was very candid when he shared his story about packing it up in New York and moving back home with his parents. Eventually, they told him that he needed to move out of their house and find a real job. Not being one to give up, Benjamin moved out and continued working on his entrepreneurial venture. The best part about that story was that he believed in himself. And with his back against the wall, he kept on going and he didn't quit. One thing Benjamin spoke about was finding a mentor and a coach and connecting with him. One of the things he was very clear on was showing up every single day. No matter what your goals are, Benjamin stressed the importance of doing 1% more each day and taking action. So with that in mind, our call to action today is just that. Do 1% more today. Take that extra step of action and do something that will bring you closer to not only accomplishing your goals, but hopefully surpassing them. And be authentic as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.